Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to make this movie film title in Hit Film Express. So we are in the free version of Hit Film, Hit Film Express. We are going to do this completely procedurally and with no add-ons at all. We're going to start by making a new composite shot, and I'm just going to call this the uh, title. And for this film title, I'm only going to make it 10 seconds long, clicking OK. I'm going to start by creating the title itself, so new layer, text, and I'm just going to type in film title. And real quickly, I want to just um, make it adjusted a little bit here so that it is and let's call that good okay what i'm going to do is right click on that and make a composite shot and i'm just going to call this the graphic this can be changed uh any way uh, that you need to change it clicking OK, and it can be changed in the graphic here in this tab and then everything will be procedurally updated. What I'm going to now do is right click on this and duplicate it. And this one I'm going to call inside graphic. And I am going to right click on it and make it into its own composite shot. And I will go ahead and current timeline, move with the layer, everything, and clicking OK. Now on the inside graphic, I want to add a matte cleaner effect and then just choke it down a little bit, maybe five, eh, you know, six, something like that. Okay. And the reason is because that will be the inside part. Okay. Uh, so what I will do is add a fill color effect to that and opening that up, we'll blend them out 100 and we'll just change that to the inside color say red and you can see that the outside one is still white so let's go ahead and add a fill color to that and we'll blend mode a hundred percent also and this one let's make it into that sort of bronze you know goldish kind of color like that okay now if you want a bigger bevel here then um going to the inside graphic you would just up the choke on that a little bit and then you'll see how it is bigger Let's just, um, you know, maybe eight, I don't know, something like that. It's to taste, and it depends on how big the graphic is, because if you change everything in the graphic here, then everything will automatically change in both of those other ones, too. Okay. All right, let's add a parallax effect to the outside graphic part first. And not much is happening, but that's because there's not a light. So let's go ahead and new layer, add a light. And I'm just going to bring that light forward slightly so that it is, you know, showing itself here on this. Very good. And under the parallax, we'll take this down to something a lot lighter, like maybe 15 or so. And I'm going to copy that and put it, paste it onto the inside graphic as well. So both of those or being affected, and that gives it that little beveled lip. And that's mostly the tutorial here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add that little um, honeycomb um, sort of pattern onto the inside. So if I say new layer, plain, it can be black, that's fine. Clicking okay. I'm just gonna add a few effects, starting with a color gradient effect. And then I'll just use these little dots to drag them from one end to the other. And basically, I'm just trying to create a gradient here, something that the next effect, which is the insect vision, can sort of grab onto. Uh, and you can see the insect vision. If I turn off the gradient, then there's nothing for it to grab onto. Now we just need to isolate the edges. And so we're going to use a find edges effect to isolate those edges out. Okay, now you can see that the ends here are a little bit uh, blurry. That's because the gradient kind of breaks down. Uh, but let me just open up the transform properties and we'll just scale that up until that's gone. Those are sort of out of there. 
And if I want to adjust the size of that, then I just go to the insect vision and just sort of, you know, change that. And it is actually lens size is what it is. So that's just maybe that big. Okay, now it's a little bit light. So if you want it to be perhaps just a smidgen uh, brighter, you can use a threshold effect. And if you drop that threshold effect on there and then knock it down to about 4%, you'll get a much better or, you know, darker edge on that. Okay. So now that we've created that, I'm just going to rename that uh, Honeycomb. And I'll bring it down here. And I'm just literally going to right click on that, so make it into its own composite shot. And again, yes, I want to move everything with it. Clicking OK. So there's the Honeycomb. Back in the main title, I can go ahead and hide it, but now it can be used uh, as a um, texture for the parallax effect. So I'm going to bring in the parallax effect and drop it on the inside graphic, opening it up, and I will use the honeycomb as the depth map. Maybe it doesn't need to be quite so strong. Ten, maybe even five. Again, I can go back into that effect, and I can drop the threshold, if, you know, it's too much for me. And I kind of like the fact that it isn't there. Now, the lighting is not quite exactly perfect. So what I'm going to do is just bring the light over here, maybe duplicate it and bring the other one over there. Um, I might take both of those lights and just push them back ever so slightly. Something like that. Okay. Or I could use one light and just expand it. I could use a spotlight. I could use directional lighting. That always uh, usually looks very nice. But there's basically my film title. Um, let's add some flares that kind of move along it. Let me just add a gray layer. And again, I will find the lens flare effect. And a light flare and drop that on there. Let me open that up. Under um, Hotspot... And let's and let's start with the intensity of it. Let me just I'm gonna take I could take the scale of that down, and I guess that's probably what I will do. But here's the thing: it still has this huge uh, flare. So instead of doing that, what I would rather do is take down the the entire amount of it, and and I would do that by taking the scale down under the pivot position itself. And when I do that. If I knock that thing down to only, you know, just 36 pixels in this case, I think it looks great. Now I can just sort of bring this and drop this, you know, say right there, for example. Maybe uh, keyframe that, go to the end, and slide it over a little bit like that. So now basically that's just sort of moving along there, okay? And then I can... Just with using Control D, I can duplicate that, open it up, uh, drop the keyframe, maybe bring it over here, and then keyframe it, go to the end of the timeline, and have it move down. And I would continue to do that, right? Adding a few more flares here until I was happy. So now I have added all of my flares. It's time to go ahead and add the motion to the entire title. So what I will do is go back out to the media bin, make a new composite, calling this the final, clicking OK, and I will just go ahead and drag in my title first. Uh, and then I can go ahead and bring in my plane, rename it background, and I can add a light flare. Opening that up, uh, I will go ahead and uh, zero out the hotspot position. And I think I will change the flare to be a sun glare. Now, there's a couple of ways of changing the color. One is you can change the color here on the under global, and you can also do a hue shift. But I'm going to instead change the color under the hotspot itself. I'll we'll make it a nice, pretty blue. Okay. And I might expand that out just a little bit bigger like that okay and then under title i'm just going to uh keyframe the uh scale and go to the end and maybe knock this down to say 85 percent. okay so 
Now we have this situation where the title is just fading back as it's going on. And pretty much, in a nutshell, that's what we have. So, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends, and hey, thanks for watching.